me welcome your host for the evening. He's recently been featured in the Boston Comedy Festival. Clap it up for Danny Palmer! Thanks, everybody. What's going on, man? Packed house, Monday nights is legit. How you guys doing? You guys drinking? Is everybody drunk? Not yet. You guys didn't drink at work today? Anybody on the math? <laughs> Just me? Okay. It's a big crap, man. Uh, this girl that I work with, she told me that she can't watch any movies or television because they overstimulate her senses. Isn't that dumb? <laughs> so just to screw with her, I made her a brownie and I put some shrooms in it. <laughs> and then I took her to a laser light show. And I went down on her. <laughs> yeah, she's dead. <laughs> Killed her. <laughs> What's going on? You guys a couple here up front? Yeah. Yeah? How long y'all been going out? Five years. Five years? Are you from Australia or something? Oh, everyone says that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> England? Okay, nice. Your teeth are pretty good and then light of the situation. <laughs> all right. He's like, fuck you, man. Just do your jokes, all right? <laughs> I don't know. I love, I love these celebrities always get in trouble for ripping up hotel rooms. Like when Charlie Sheen was in New York, he caused like $7,000 worth of damage at the Plaza Hotel. Which actually, I wasn't impressed with that. I mean, the Plaza Hotel's a really nice place. $7,000 for the damage there? That's probably like an end table and a lamp. <laughs> you want to impress me, do $7,000 for the damage in the Motel 6. <laughs> that thing up. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh. <laughs> so I'm 37 years old, I'm single, I don't have any kids. I don't really want to have kids, you know? People are like, well, Danny, if you don't have kids, who's going to take care of you when you get older? I'm like, you want me to inseminate a woman so that I can produce my own home health care aid? <laughs> I do that? You guys like horror movies? You know horror movies, miss? Yeah, right? No, they're terrible. <laughs> like, fear is not a positive emotion. I don't want to spend $15 for somebody to try to terrify me. I saw this ad on TV for a horror movie the other day. It was like, you will never sleep again. I'm like, no, I can't do that. I have a job. It's gonna work. My, uh, my friend Derek is gay. He's super gay. He lives like five blocks from me. We're really good friends. He comes over to my apartment all the time. Like, to the point that I just gave him keys to my apartment. I'm like, just come and go as you please. You know, it's no big deal. But now he's on my laptop all the time. He's always looking up gay porn. I'm like, God damn it, stop doing that. It's gross, you know? And now he's done it so much that he's like retrained Google to misinterpret my words. <laughs> like I type in boobs and it just fills in or gross. <laughs> I, I want to win the lottery just so I can start being a dick to people. Like that's the main reason. Like I want to win the lottery and just get a cab here and be like, hey man, take me to Houston. <laughs> the cab would be like, did you mean to say Houston Street, sir? I'm like, you're here at the first time, asshole. Start driving. <laughs> So now we're on this like five day road trip to Houston. <laughs> it's like really uncomfortable and tense. <laughs> we have to stop in motels to sleep. <laughs> we're both brushing our teeth in the sink, but nobody's talking. <laughs> we finally get down to Houston. I'm like, just take me straight to the airport. <laughs> I get on a first class flight back to New York. <laughs> I call him up from my penthouse apartment. I'm like, yo, what's up, Rashid? Where are you at, buddy? He's like, my cab just broke down in the interstate. I'm like, yeah, I just jerked off on your mom. <laughs> yep, that's how that ends. <laughs> I don't care, I'll never change it. I love that. <laughs> do, you like, do you like pornography? Nice to be in a porn. No. Not at all? You don't get him to send a picture of your dick and just go to town yourself? You don't do that? I guess that's different than porn, sorry. I don't know, I feel like it's 2013. If a woman wants to watch porn, she should be able to do that, you know? But I feel like if your girlfriend wants to watch porn, there should be this system where she has to go to this one website and like register her fingerprint, and then all of the videos are categorized by dick size. So she can only watch videos up to and including your dick size. <laughs> and then if she goes one size over, it just redirects to male Asian porn. <laughs> it's okay, Asian people are fine with that joke, right? We're good? Yeah, see, right there, fine. Totally fine. He's like, I got a small dick, bro, that's fine. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I do too, that's fucking insane. What are you doing? <laughs> 
<laughs> you guys, uh, <laughs> wait too early for this. You guys ever think about mixing dirty talk and baby talk? You ever do this? It's kind of dirty, right? You're fucking this girl, you're giving it to her really good. You're like, yeah, you like that girl? You like that? Yeah, you want me to come? Where do you want me to come? You want me to come all over your tum tum? Yeah? No. <laughs> Does anybody want it? Tum tum. <laughs> I, like to, I like to set goals for myself in life, you know? I think that's pretty important to do. One of my goals right now is to date much younger girls, like all of these girls here, right? Mm. Yeah. I mean, think about it, John McCain's wife is 18 years younger than him, and he almost became president. In fact, I can think of nothing more romantic than being there to witness my wife's birth. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? Honey, I cut your cord. See you in 16 years. <laughs> Oh, like it would be okay if I said 18? <laughs> Both situations are pretty shitty. <laughs> I don't know, man. <clears throat> um, I don't know, do you guys have any questions for me at this point that I can address? <laughs> Miss? Um, I don't know. I do the lottery one, yeah. Here's the thought that <laughs> I smoke a lot of pot. <laughs> Here's something, yeah, right? Can you tell? Here's something I think about. It's not just gross, but like, I just feel like, well, like, do we need balls, you know? Uh, don't you feel like if your boyfriend didn't have balls, wouldn't that be better? Do, you know? do we need the balls banging against you? It's, you know? It'd be cleaner. Yeah, it'd be cleaner? Are, are his balls dirty? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting that answer. <laughs> Wait, take a shower, bro. It's her favorite. I don't know, I just feel like, you know, it's, it's weird. They're just weird things. They're just hanging down there. It's just odd, you know what I mean? Like, like every other body part makes sense to me. Like, you see with your eyes, you hear with your ears, you pick up things with your hands. But then your balls are down there, and they're just like... We may come. <laughs> We're cum makers. <laughs> Let us know if you need anything, as long as it's cum. <laughs> That's our only product. <laughs> See how he's stirring the cum? <laughs> no one's <wants> congeal. <laughs> I, like I like to think about the experience at the end of life. Like, if you had six months left to live, what would you do? I've got a little plan that I would put in place. Like for the first three months, I would do all the standard shit that you're supposed to do, like say goodbye to your family and friends and make amends with your enemies. But then for the last three months, I would go on the most insane hedonistic binge of all time, man. I'd be drinking every night, I'd be doing tons of cocaine, I'd be fucking hookers without a condom. And I would do heroin, man. I would do a lot of fucking heroin. Because I've never done it before, but you know that shit is good. People do not throw away their lives and live in empty houses for nothing. <laughs> Shit is fucking good. <laughs> people say that uh, people say that marijuana is a gateway drug. It's a gateway to much harder drugs. I'm like, yeah, I definitely agree with that. Pot's definitely a gateway. It's a gateway to fucking having a super awesome time with all your friends. It's a gateway to pretending like you live in space. <laughs> it's a bit weird. I don't know, man. All right, good. Everybody's having fun? We're good? Yeah. Uh, you guys heard of this movie called Step Up 3? What? Oh, I missed the thing, so what? All right. You guys heard of this movie called Step Up 3? Anybody? Yeah? It's a terrible movie, right? It's about urban street dancing, which is its own separate problem. <laughs> what the hell is that? They've got this line in the movie. You can tell that the writers put a lot of like meaning and emphasis behind it. It's a very powerful moment in the film. And so I've decided that I'm going to start using this line in my day-to-day -day life. So the next time I go to the DMV and I get to the front of the line, the guy's like, hello, sir, can I get your name and address, please? I'm just gonna go. Everything you need to know about me is in my dancing. <laughs> okay, okay, all right, all right. All right, man, we have such a great show for you guys tonight. You guys ready to have a great time tonight? Yeah.